The Dead Pair Podcast is brought to you by the Elite Experience Elite Shotguns and is fueled by Fioki. Oh. Welcome to the Dead Pair Podcast, coming in hot with everything you want to hear about sporting clays. Guy Fieri. How are you, gentlemen? Thanks for having me. Anthony Batteries Jr., how you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well. Welcome back, David Radulovic. That's a net positive. <laughs> Brad Kidd. Corey Cruz. Thank you for joining us this evening. Now I feel awkward. With your hosts, Jason Rambo. No more Red Bull for you. And Sean Alley. Woo, yeah! Christmas. Let's do it. Often imitated, but never duplicated. It's the Dead Pair Podcast. The Dead Pair. And now, it's showtime. Mr. Large and in Charge, what is up, my large mammal friend? Doing well, Mr. Rambo. How about yourself? I've, well, now that Chad's finally left town, I'm finally getting a nap. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of like the Energizer Bunny. Andy. Get me a little nappy poo. He's a busy guy. Hey, I filed a complaint with my uh, local convenience store on the way here. Okay. Yeah, they they keep selling me non-winning lottery tickets. I said this is a bunch of crap. Where do I sign up? Because I've bought a bunch of them <laughs> recently and they haven't paid off hey, either. Hey, look, I paid my five dollars. I should win, right? Something. You know, should get right? win something, right? So, wouldn't it be nice if Lottery gave out participation awards? Right. <laughs> Figure if there was a oh, billion man. dollars giveaway, at least to give me a couple grand or whatever. Yeah. So, it's been a hot minute. Uh, everyone since the Ohio State shoot, that went, that went awesome. I, it was just unbelievable. Um, the only reason I bring that up is because next year, the Ohio State shoot is the week following the U.S. Open. Yeah. How, how cool is that? That'll be cool. Hopefully a lot of those guys uh, and gals can make the trip over from Chicago. Oh, yeah. And uh, stop by and visit the Buckeye State. Well, as good as everything ran, we have plans to fine-tune everything. There was a lot of compliments. I mean, I when I was out on the course, uh, there was a lot of people there for the first time. Uh, Malcolm and Melanie Parker said a lot of nice things. Uh, had a fellow from Tennessee talk to me for a little while. Um, everybody was very, very happy with uh, how things were ran at Cardinal. So hats off to Jake and everybody for the at Cardinal Center to, to put on a good event like that. And yeah. then the weather was nice, too. Yeah, and uh, welcome to the board, by the way. Ohio State Sport and Clay Association. Mr. Alley is now yeah, our director. I've, I've joined into the dark side now. Yes, Here we you, go. You have stepped off into the deep pool, my friend. <laughs> Let me tell you. Hang on to your pantyhose. Yeah, looking um, forward to it. Hopefully I can help you guys out one way or the other. Hey, one last thing about the Ohio State shoot. I just want to say thank you. We had a lot of people come up to us, Sean and I both, and, and say that they were present because of us. And that that was just very humbling. And I appreciate that very much. And I hope, you know, everybody at the time we talked to them said they were having a blast. So yeah. I hope they uh, they finished out their Ohio State shoot on a good note. And um I hope it went well for them. Yeah, and I think overall the numbers were very good. We didn't quite hit the 600 mark, but I think it was like around 565 or something total We shooters. were We were 18 people light of the Western Regional. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, for, for little old Ohio, I think we did all right. Yeah, for sure. Hey, speaking of shoots, we have a tourney talk to get to. It's tourney talk. <laughs> Brought to you by Score Chaser. All right, everybody. Massachusetts State opened up, and it is at Minuteman Sports Club September 30th through the October 1st. Uh, that's this year, 2023. And then for next year, 2024, the Ducks Unlimited Eastern Continental Shoot at Cross Creek Clays is open now for registr- registration. Uh, that shoot will be held May 1st through the 5th. Again, that is 2024. Last but not least, the 2024 California State at Quail Point Hunt Club is now open, and that event will be held May 2nd through the 5th. Again, that's 2024. Awesome. Um, speaking of shoots, again, uh, Mr. Neil Chadwick had called me, uh, as you know, Sean, mm-hmm. and he wants to talk about the Nationals. So I'm anxious to hear what this man has to say. Um, I wrote down a few questions here. Uh, hopefully we'll get time to get to them. Um, but uh, Neil's never <laughs> never one shy of words. So let's get him on the phone, see what he has to say. Cool. The Dead Pair. All right, on the phone with us, very excited about this, Mr. Neil Chadwick. How are you, sir? Good, Jason. How are you guys? Oh, I'm doing excellent. Wonderful to have you on the, the show. This is the first time for us. Uh, I know you and Jason talked quite a bit at the Nationals last year, so I'm excited to have you join the uh, episode tonight. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm pleased to be with you. You know, as long as we can get the word out and get people interested and uh, and, and ramp up the excitement, I'm good to go. Uh, wonderful. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's start off easy. Neil, um, you know, obviously you've been around the sport a long time, but for those who may not know who you are, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and maybe abbreviated version of your history of the sport? 
How long have we got? <laughs> uh, I, I know I know that was a loaded question. I'm just saying, if you can, maybe paraphrase it down, and let's see what we can do here. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, started shooting sort of mid-70s. When I say started shooting, that's competition targets. I shot before then, you know, on the farm back in, in the UK. Um, first fit shoot was a about 79, which would have been a European, um, shot all through the 80s, uh, shot for England in 87, uh, won my class in, it was either the British Open or the English Open in 84, um, moved over here in 91, uh, started setting targets within that first couple of years. Oh, I owned a ground in the UK as well in the mid 80s, that was one of these little what we call weekend club you know open saturday sunday moved over here in 91 um 93 94 started setting targets and uh, just set a lot of targets over here you know so that's the abbreviated version if you like okay that's fair enough um for those that don't know one of your many many uh, applauded skills is that you're very good at course design is that correct well, I've done a few over the years. Yep, um, yep. Uh, <laughs> you know, try and make best use of the try and make best use of the land. Uh, look at the topography. Um, you know, don't set anything into the sun. Try and have the shoot and stands facing north and south. Uh, all the good stuff. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what do you feel like makes a good course designer, and and uh, and why do you think a club would benefit from a person such as yourself who has a very broad background of the sport um, versus like maybe just hiring a, you know, a regular construction company or some, some developer to come in and try to set up a course? Well, I think if you get somebody in that's good to design the course, it, it, that will make or break the club. Um, and like I just said, you know, and I've seen it, you know, there's a, a number of clubs where the courses are laid out and because of the land, probably, you're either facing east or west. Well, okay, that's all right for part of the year, but when we get into the to, into the winter months, the sun is obviously lower and it makes it more difficult. If you've got the room and you've got the land, ideally you want the courses facing north and south or shooting north and, north and south. Well, Neil, we're gonna we're gonna kind of build you up here before we drop the bomb on you. So I'm gonna ease into some of these questions. Um, you know. Being in the sport as long as you have, uh, you've witnessed a great deal of changes. You know, the, the ammo, the guns, the targets, even the shooters themselves. What are some of the biggest differences from today versus, say, 30 years ago when the sport was just starting out here in the States? Uh, well, I say 30 years ago. It's been 40 years ago now. But um, what, what do you think? I mean, there's obvious differences. But what do you think, as far as a competition standpoint, sets today versus yesterday apart well that's a good question you know and i've been for, i've been fortunate in 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 being here for most of that 30 years um and i've seen a big change i mean 30 years ago there were not a number of clubs um and i always remember on a first trip over before i moved over the first place that i shot was uh george hopkins place down in maryland and well, I couldn't hit a thing. Everything was so close and so slow uh, compared to the targets that I'd been shooting in the UK, Europe, and around the world. And it was, I think we've seen a change from that. There's still a lot of places throw the slower, easier, looping targets that people like to shoot, and I call them feel-good targets. But we've certainly moved along to what I would call hardcore competition targets where we've got perhaps a little bit more distance, certainly more speed. I see more speed being thrown on a lot of targets. So over the years, I think people have come to realize what's sort of a, uh, I'm going to call it a club target. You know what I mean when I say a club target, as opposed to a competition target. And if you take all that and wrap that up into a nice, package i think that the degree of targets has become more difficult which has helped our shooters to be basically the best shooters in the world at the moment yeah well 
Let's since you brought it up, let's let's talk about the targets for a minute. Um, we've seen a mixed bag from one extreme to the other lately. Um, for example, uh, the 2022 U.S. Open and versus the Western Regional that just happened here a couple weeks back. Uh, we're, we're talking one extreme to the other. Um, so, in your opinion, on as far as target difficulty, where do you think we should be? Because this is a, and I know it's an open-ended question. We we've asked it to a lot of people on the show and everybody has their own opinion, but for somebody at your standpoint, I mean, look, you're involved with the targets for the super squad, um, along with Joe skull, you know, at the national shooting complex. So what do you, what's your opinion on these targets? Well, it's obviously somewhere between, you know, the open last year and the regional that's just been, um, and you can put on a, you can put on a range of targets that, in general keeps everybody happy the regional that was just uh that was just held there in colorado was i mean it was a great shoot uh from what i hear and i've spoken to a lot of people a lot of people call me the hospitality the area uh the park in the clubhouse everything was perfect water on the course uh goodies and stuff like that and the only thing that let this let let the shoot down was the targets and I got a lot of comments back that, you know, I've paid oh, whatever it was, X amount of dollars to go and shoot targets that I could shoot my local club. Mm, that was yeah. the biggest, uh, uh, that was not a complaint. Well, it was, but that was the biggest sort of, you know, why do I pay all this money? I want to go and shoot something that I've never seen before that is, that sort of tests me. Um, and I pay all that money. I could have stayed at home. Uh, and gone to the local club and shot the same targets. Right. So there's that perspective. Uh, there's also the perspective that, you know, a regional is a quali- I call it a qualifying shoot. Out of all the regionals, we're going to pick people to represent the country. So rather than be, rather than be a shoot where, you know, I'm going to shoot for score, it was a shoot where it was, I don't want to call it a skeet shoot, but you if you missed one it was it was a shoot where you didn't want to miss one if you if you follow me i mean i've never seen a shoot i've never seen a shoot with scores so many scores in the 90s and and that's fine i get it i I get it but i think there's a i think there's a place a time and a place for other big blasts to do that where it's not such an important shoot yeah does that make sense yeah absolutely well, and conversely, it's on put the shoe on the other foot. You know, we've all talked about the, the the U.S. Open a year or two ago that you know the targets were to a lot of people were so far over the top. There was some disgruntled people that actually you know left on the first day and went home. So, I mean, it's a tough. I guess, in my opinion, it's a very tough act to follow because you got to keep the guys that are at the top of the game appeased with good targets, but at the same time, you don't want to make the new people that are in E and D and C class feel like that they don't belong and they don't have any fun, right? Because you got to kind of keep a balance between everybody. And I'm sure that's a challenge for everybody. And that's the challenge of setting a good course. Um, obviously, we want everybody to have a good time. I mean, take last year's Nationals, for example. And I told everybody, I said, green is going to be tough. And that got about, you know, green's going to be the tough one. If you started on green, well, you started off on the toughest course. And I had people come up to me, oh, that's too tough. You know, I said, well, you haven't shot the others yet. Um, so if they based everything on the green course, they were going they were in for a tough time. Fortunately, the other three courses at the mains were certainly easier, with one of them being really quite easy. So the whole thing as a... As a, as a complete tournament, um, the, the, everybody had a good time. If I looked at the scores, which I did, of course, uh, you know, the, the scores turned out to be one of the easiest shoots over the last five years of nationals. Well, let me change gears on you here. So, you know, Jason and I, we push this podcast to get new people into the sport and try to help people that have gotten into the sport recently uh, learn all about it. So would you agree that it's easier 
for a new shooter to come into the sport now, especially with all the the videos, the coaches, uh, you know, everything that's available now wasn't available, say, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, and I would imagine things were maybe a little bit kept a little bit more secretive or closer to the vest. People didn't want to share as much as they do today. Is, is, is So you're, you're kind of asking, is it easier for a new shooter to be successful? Yeah. I mean, quicker. basically, if they come into the sport with the proper coaching, the proper training, it's there. They just have to apply themselves to do it. Um, is it is it an easier or a faster track to get to be a good shooter than it was, say, 20 or 30 years ago? Most definitely. I think we're seeing an upsurge in, in the sport um, with the new shooters coming along. I mean, I, uh, you know, I read articles. Where was it? Up in um, Minnesota. Did I read correctly that they had, that they had 8,000 kids on a trap shoot? Yeah, I think I read yeah, Wow. I, I think that's correct. I yeah. don't, honestly don't know. I mean, well, I mean that's just amazing. Yeah, I was at the uh, PA State what about a month ago now, and we had a couple of uh, of uh, of the competitors come over from. Oh, I think you was perhaps there, Jason. What was it? SCTP. Yeah, yeah, SCTP Nationals. Um, the, yeah, I, I don't remember. I think overall entrance for that one, and you know what, Jake is going to shoot me because I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I want to say it was closer to four thousand total entries. Yeah. Yeah, and we had a couple of groups of the, of the uh, obviously the parents with the with the kids come over and they shot the PA state, uh, and it was good to see to see them. But they were committed. Obviously, they just finished at uh, at Cardinal and drove straight to um, Berlin, Pennsylvania, for the PA state. So I'm seeing a lot more commitment from the kids and the parents that 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 are making it available. To the kids to shoot if you follow me yeah mm-hmm. absolutely the kids can't shoot if the parents are not going to help them right and you know it's funny because and real quick on that um we had a while back we had ben huswade and then of course we recently had brad kid on and they were talking about the youth shooting in europe is non-existent i mean it's nothing compared to what we have in the united states i mean it's that you know their future their sports kind of hanging in the balance over there is what i'm understanding and that's right. I think it's the people over there are not exposed to the sport. Um, it's still, believe it or not, over there sort of, um, how can I put it without being sort of, uh, it's a sort of an upper class type sport. If you talk about, you know, shooting over there, people have thought you, you're talking about driven pheasant um, and that type of thing. Although the CPSA does do a good job with putting stuff on. Uh, there's that YouTube channel, what's it called, uh, Field Sports something. Uh, and they cover the shoots. But unless you get into it, you would never look at those channels anyway. Yeah. So um, there's obviously in the UK, there is not the school uh, participation in the shooting sports like there is here. So you don't get introduced to shotgunning through, whether it be ATA trap or skeet. Um, It just doesn't happen. So over there, it's still the young farmers and the farming community community that's still, if you like, pushing the sport. Although there's a ton of people that are not farmers that still shoot shotguns, of course. Right. All right, Neil. Enough of this soft stuff. We're putting you in the hot seat here. Uh (laughs) Sean and I are both delegates for the NSCA, and we recently had to vote on a on a proposed rule change. Actually, it's been out for a while now. Uh, yep. One in particular was number five in regards to coaching in the box, and, and so everybody understands. Basically, the rule now states that once a shooter's in the box, they are not allowed to communicate with anyone other than the field judge or the trapper. So, Neil, this is a three-part question here. We'll start with the first one. Why do you think this rule was an, was enacted? Why? Well, if, you've got to take it in conjunction with the 22nd rule. Um, and remember, that rule only comes into effect for, I think I'm correct in saying, regionals, open, and nationals. Am correct. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure I'm correct in saying yeah. that. Yeah. Um, uh, with there being so many shooters now in those shoots, uh, one of the biggest problems I have is running everything to schedule. Um, 
the coaching thing, uh, and we've all seen it, you know, I mean, if you're standing back in the crowd and you shout out, you're behind it. Is that coaching? I guess, theoretically, it is. But what that rule was designed to do was to stop the guy. You've, and you've seen it. We've all seen it where it's a young lad. He's in the cage and he misses and he looks around despondent and his dad gets in the cage with him. Right. So it's that type of thing. I mean, there's still the three foot rule where the next competitor should be three foot behind the stand. Um, but the, but those rules are designed to streamline the process and keep everything moving along, you know, and I've had people say, you know, well, why did you introduce the 22nd rule? Well, I, I got, I brought that up to the EC two years ago at nationals. We had uh, a group of, uh, of competitors and they were all from Mexico and all of them were 35 and 40 seconds in their pre-shot routine, plus the jabbering backwards and forwards. And I can, I didn't know what they were saying because I don't speak Spanish. Uh, <laughs> <but> <laughs> and uh, of course, and I first noticed it, and, I, and I'll always pick it out when the stand in front of a squad is empty. Well, that should, in theory, that should never happen. So. You know, I brought it up to EC and said, you know, we need a time uh, a time between shots uh, just to keep things moving along, and then then on top of that came the coaching uh, the coaching rule as well. Gotcha. Did that? Yeah, no, that answers the question perfectly, um, and that makes sense. With more people shooting, you got to push the schedule and get p- things done, or else it's going to last all day. Totally. totally so, like and that. but he's disappointing me. He didn't. He didn't name drop. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you know, and and then and then people say, well, are the referees going to have uh, are the referees going to have stopwatches? Uh, well, no. Don't be stupid. They're not. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like. We all abide by the 15-second rule on FITAS. Right. This is 20 seconds. You've got five more seconds. Just sort of make your routine so that you load your shells, you get yourself ready, you move your feet or whatever you want to do from the previous shot and call pull. If you're running over 22, 23 seconds, is anybody going to say anything? No. I mean, they're not. If we find that somebody's running slow... Then the course manager, if there's a course manager on the course, uh, can be notified and say, you know, this guy's running 28, 29, 30 seconds. Then just a friendly word. Hey, you know, we need to speed it up a little bit. Right. Um, but I think overall, everybody, everybody has accepted the rule, and and uh, and, and most people can uh, are well within 20 seconds. Most people, you know. CPSA in the UK is 10 seconds. Well, That's if we crazy. introduce 10 seconds here, everybody could start shouting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wouldn't they? I mean, well, I can't do that in 10 seconds, you know. Who was it? I watched that Radulovic on, on one of his things. Well, oh, what a dope. I mean, <laughs> he was he was in his living room, and he, I've, I don't know what he was doing, but, uh, I mean, he... He couldn't put the shelves in the gun or whatever, but he he was making making out that it was more than, and I think he was doing ten seconds. Well, <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was funny. I just thought he was messing about, but he was deadly serious, you know. Yeah, he's he's one of the ones known to take a little time on the pre-shot routine, and and uh, <laughs> yeah. other other people akin to him, obviously. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean. A bloody good shot. You can't take that away from him. No, no, definitely not. Uh, he definitely just not. he just won our Ohio State shoot, and it was pretty impressive. Right. Yep. Well, uh, speaking of new rules and changes, uh, a lot of people are looking forward to the upcoming national championship, uh, especially after all the wonderful changes that happened last year, the super squad being the main point. Um, do you feel that was a good change for the tournament, and do you think it's going to help the sport? The you're talking specifically about Super Squad now? Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the, yeah. just the focus of it and kind of changing it up to where you know the the top contenders were focused on towards the end of the tournament, and everybody was able to watch them shoot. I thought that was just the way to do it. I mean, you know, typically, or oh, World English and that type of thing, uh, there's usually a Super Final. Um, 
25 targets, whatever it might be. This, the, the super squad thing, I just thought was so exciting. I mean, I was down there watching them and, uh, you know, and everybody's nice and friendly. Oh, you know, okay, do well and fist bumps and stuff like that. Really what they're saying is, I'm going to get you, you bastard. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, they are, aren't they? I mean, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, I mean, Brandon Powell, he's fist bumping. He's going to go, I'm going to get you on the next one. Right. You know, I mean, it, it is. And you can see that. I mean, it's, it's good. And the girls, I mean, the girls just shot lights out. They were just amazing. I thought that was brilliant. And I think that we should keep that super squad uh, format going along. Yeah, I, I do too. I think it was neat. Of course, you know I was involved with it. Um, right. But so you got to play devil's advocate, right? Um, there are some grumblings about the super squad. Um, some people are not real happy and not, about not being able to, to shoot with whom they want. Uh, rotation times being set for them, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure you've heard these grumblings. What's your yeah. opinion on all that? Well, you know, it's, yeah, and I feel for them. I really do. I want to shoot. I, the only time I can shoot is the first weekend. Well, then, you know, okay, if you shoot first weekend, obviously you can't be on the super squad. Right. So it's going to be a bit of give and take, uh, you know. Now, that's not to say I'm guessing that if somebody shoots the highest score on the first Saturday, Sunday, they can still win the nationals, can't they? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I guess if we got into that situation where there was a really high score in, then the super squads would be chasing that score. So I think that would still provide some excitement because now they know what score they're going after when they're all in the A and B squad. They're just keeping an eye on, okay, I need to, pull up two against him and he's only one behind oh now he's missed one so i'm only one behind that type of thing um um if somebody uh, like i say if somebody put a high score in on the first weekend or the monday tuesday then they know what they're going after it would be slightly different than you expect to somebody to win it from the super squad right i mean you know i get both sides of it i really do i think it's really cool um you know, to, to see the drama unfold, and it, and it happened. It came all the way down to the 10th station last year, you know, with Zach and in the same way with Halen. And uh, right. it was really, really exciting to see that drama unfold. But I also understand the logistics of it. You know, uh, you, you're it's expensive, right, in, to shoot this. So you're going to go there with your dad or your buddy or your uncle or whoever. You're going to squad together. You're going to share a golf cart. You're going to, you know, share a hotel room, and you've made plans to travel and all this. And now all of a sudden, that's yeah. been yanked. So I, I kind of get both sides of it, but really, I don't know. I think for the better of the sport, I think the super squad and the way it's working out, it. it I mean, wouldn't you agree, Sean? I think it's really exciting. I well, think it's I, awesome. I think the main point is that, like we said, there was more people watching that super squad than ever before. On the net. Oh yeah, I mean, so, so Neil, you're, Neil will tell you it was nuts down there. Right, and I didn't, I wasn't able to make it, and I saw, but I saw it on TV, and I think, in my opinion, if we're going to keep this sport growing and gaining in popularity, you got to build. You have to build an audience to yeah. watch this stuff because otherwise, who cares? Well, Neil, I would say there was, and and correct me if I'm wrong or if I'm way out in left field, but I would say there was as many people there for the the final day of the Super Squad. Is there was for the Top Gun shootout on Friday night? Oh, easily, easily, if not more. I mean, I, I, I would think more. You know, but of course the the other thing was everybody was on a buggy, and you know we tried to stop people going the non uh, the non competitor on that rotation. We tried to stop them and park their buggies up by where you were. Uh, but that didn't work, you know, because they say, are you shooting? They go, yes. So, you, you, <laughs> had to them, you know, you had to let them buy. But that will be a little bit different this year because although that was green, green is back where it was in the bigger field on the east end of the course. So green is back where it was oh, really? this year. That, yeah, that's where, the, uh, that's where the super squads will finish on Sunday. So, okay. So there's plenty of room up there to get buggy. Well, you know, uh, you know how big it is. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's a lot, wi- it's a lot wider. Um, uh, so that's where that will be this year. 
Gotcha. Well, Neil, we've talked a lot already about the rule changes, uh, the new stuff with the Nationals and the Super Squad. In your opinion, uh, is the sport heading in the right direction? Are, are we going? Are we doing all that we can to keep it growing? And, and if not, do you have any suggestions or import input about you know what else can we do to help it uh, grow and, and continue to be successful? The uh, we're definitely heading in in the right direction. Um, we've got to be careful that we don't get ahead of ourselves. If you look what we've done over the last 30 years, it's it's really amazing how far the sport has come, the number of competitors, how good the competitors are. The there, and I believe I'm, and I know I'm correct in saying that there's more, let's call them recreational shooters, uh, than there are competitive shooters, and that's a natural progression. You know, everybody is going to attend the nationals at some stage, and they might attend it once or twice. And I look at the numbers every year, and we'll get. 300 that dropped off from the prior year, but we've got 350 first-time attendees this year, for example. So everybody wants to go to the Nationals. I think it's somewhere where the new shooter, the club shooter, the season shooter can see how they compete against 2,200 other people. Yeah. So... And I hear it a lot, you know, and you guys do as well. You get a club shit. Well, my average is 92. Oh, okay. Well, that's good for you. Um, you know, uh, and he thinks he's going to shoot 92 at nationals. Well, he could. Right. But, I'll, uh, you know, I'd bet you a dollar that he's not. Gotcha. Because, he, because he's a club shooter. So we are still got to show him a good time, and maybe he's not going to shoot 92. Maybe he'll shoot. 75 to 80. <laughs> um, but what we don't want to see, for example, and the guys I get down to set targets, I tell them I don't want any zeros on any stand. So uh, there's nothing more sort of defeating than coming off a stand with a zero. Um, yeah. So uh, although we'll put some tough targets on, um, It'll only be one on a stand. It should never be two on a stand. Well, look, you so, know, go ahead, Neil. I, I got a comment about that, so I don't want to lose my thought. But go ahead. So I'm sad. So the point being that that um, we don't want to deflate everybody's ego, and you know, some of them do, um, but they have to understand that our job is to put on targets that are gonna that they probably haven't seen and uh, you know at their local club because their local club does not put that style of target on we want to test them a little bit and they go and 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 you've seen it as well where it's particularly tough target and they and they whoop and holler because they hit it well that's good that's what i like to see you know joe skull was a part of those targets and and i shot those targets now look my ability is somewhere between terrible and sucking, um, and I did not think <laughs> I didn't think those targets were that that hard. Okay, uh, especially since last year we came from the U.S. Open where it was um, right. But, but I, I really thought those were fun targets. I didn't think they were over the top. But that being said, and now listen, Mr. Skull. We, scald us all up here at Ohio State. She, we he, he, we tripped up pretty bad up here. But, again, they were excellent targets. I mean, there was plenty of time for vision, uh, plenty of time. There was no short windows. Nothing uh, over the top. Nothing over the top. No, you didn't get beat with speed or distance. And so, but what is it, Neil? What is it about the national championship? It's like you step into the box and it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then dead loss, lost dead, lost pair. It's like, are you – Kidding me? This just really happened, you know. <laughs> so, but what is it about the national championship, Neil? Is it just the, just that, just the pressure of being a national championship that trips people up so bad? You know, I don't, I don't think so. Well, it's certainly a little bit of pressure. Everybody that goes to the nationals obviously wants to do well. Um, the top guys, the top, let's say, I'm going to say the top hundred guys. They should be. They shouldn't feel the pressure. Although with the added super squad, I know that some of them feel the pressure. Um, but I think really it's sort of um, 
it's understanding the targets. You know, if you haven't seen a target presentation such as we put on down at Nationals, and we've got stuff in open fields, we've got stuff, stuff coming out the bushes, we've got some angles we can put on speed. If they haven't seen those targets, then and they don't know how to approach those targets, then they'll hit 50% of them. Right. That's where I hope that they'll recognize that they'll go, I, you know, I don't know how to shoot that one. And then they'll go to a coach and get a lesson, you know, a couple of hours uh, just to make sure that their basics are correct. And then most coaches then or most places you can put on a similar target to what they missed and they can say, okay, this is how you shoot that. A coach is going to be able to put you right on that particular front within 30 minutes. Yeah. Well, you, you, I guess part of my, my point to that was is let's take last Sunday of the Nationals, for example. Um, you know, Justin and I were sitting at a table, and I had a screen that had 13 cameras going in front of me, and I was watching just pair after pair after pair, and I had already obviously had already shot that course, and I was watching a, you know, a station that I ran that several well-named shooters – Maybe they dropped one. Maybe they dropped two. And, it, and it's like, wow. You know, I didn't expect that from them. But then again, there was also a couple of stations I struggled that they just smoked it, right? Yeah. I, I guess that was my point is even the guys at the top, targets that even where I ran a station, now we've already discussed my terrible ability, um, even where I ran a station, they would still drop one or two. And that's why I thought, well, it, it's the pressure of the national championship. This is a super squad. This is Sunday. This is the... This is the big tamale right here, right? So I guess that was the basis for my question. Yes, and I agree with you to some extent, but Joe did a great job on that green course. Oh, now, the absolutely, two, yeah. The, the, the two, there was two targets, really, on that course, and I looked at it with Joe, and we actually changed one. On station one, you had that steady crosser from the right-hand side that came in. Well, that was the easy one, right? And then you had that tealy type target that come up from behind the tree. The trap teal, yep, yep. Okay, so immediately that was that was that was one of them, and I knew that was one of them that uh, that's going to catch you out, or you should never miss that crosser because it was in your face basically. But if you timed that crosser so that you were lined up to the one behind the tree it made it somewhat easier. And I saw I saw some really good shooters just smoke that teal. I saw some really good shooters miss that crosser. Hmm. Yeah. You know. Then, of course, the other one was that on Station 8, the, that midi from your left-hand side. That midi Shondell? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And, yep. uh, and now that was just a particularly technically difficult target. If you did not know how to shoot it, you were lost for example and uh zach won't mind me saying this because he won it but i think he missed he might have missed all of them i certainly think he missed three of them and then uh Helen that won it she hit all of those yeah it was a three pair that was a three pair station so i think i think zach missed three there um and Helen hit them all I like in the middle, like it was nothing. I so, well, and Zach talked about that too, and, and I and I don't mean to interrupt you. I want to hear finish hearing what you were saying, but Zach told me that he thought because of the angle and the time of day, he had a tough time seeing it, like the sun was glaring off of it or something. I I don't remember now, but he did tell me he had a tough time seeing it. Yeah, and you see, we'd moved that initially. That target was doing the same thing on the right hand side. Now, and the reason we moved it was at that towards the end of the afternoon with the target on the right hand side, it had bottom to you, so it was showing belly. Mm -hmm. And we looked at that at several times during the afternoon, and at certain points, it, you got that silver sheen off it. Right. And, and it sort of disappeared, and we liked the target. So we said between us, Joe and myself, we said, let's move it to the left hand side. It's going to show orange, because it was an orange top midi, which is all they had. Um, 
And between us, we said that that was the better side. I never liked throwing orange in the sky, um, but because that started low down and there was that tree line further back, our thoughts were that you could pick it up early enough coming off the trap so that then you would be able to see it the rest of the way. Gotcha. Well, let me let me circle back. Uh, all the talk about the Nationals, we kind of got ahead of ourselves. Is there anything else coming up new this year that you'd like to mention or talk about that uh, that wasn't done last year or years prior? At Nationals? Yeah. Okay, let's cover Nationals a little bit because I've got a few things to go over. All right. um, we've spoken about uh, Chris doing the uh, video. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not going to be live streamed this year. Okay. What will happen, that will all be uh, collated and edited and go back, and then several days afterwards, then that will be posted, I assume, to YouTube Mm -hmm. so that everybody can look at it. So it will not be live streamed this year. Okay. Um, However, if things go according to plan, there will be live scoring. Oh, okay. Nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 10 people on the 10 stations of the green. Um, and it, and I don't know if you was at the uh, at Miles is open. It's, it's going to be the same procedure. There'll be somebody standing back taking the score, which will then be uh, sent straight to score chaser. They will immediately put it up so that you can see the live scores on your phone. That's awesome. Nice. Nice. So now I haven't seen that. I used to, I saw it when we used to do PSCA when uh, Joey Wright had tablets and that was instantaneous type thing. So I'm thinking it's going to be very similar to that. Um, uh, so that should be good. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Yeah, um, we've really uh, we always try to move things around. Well, this year we've moved stuff around. Um, the only thing really that is in the same place is obviously the main events. The four main events will be along main event road, the, the four courses. Uh, Master AA five stand is no longer down on the lower skeet fields. K cup is no longer where it was up on what we called the old red that was up through the woods. That's now down on the lower skeet fields. The uh, sub gauge, so that's 4, 10, and 28, will be down where Master AA five stand was, and that will run completely down that uh, north facing side. K cup will be on the other side. So the problem we've got there is I've got to get I've got to get 26 stations in that uh, around the lower skeet fields. Anyway, so which we'll do. Super Sporting is where K-Cup was, and I'm sure Brent will do a great job setting that up around there. It will be a little bit tight. Um, he won't have the open areas that he had. There'll be a couple of open areas. So that's moved there. But the other thing is as well that the station numbering has changed quite a bit. So check the map. And to that end, they've updated or improved on the NSCA event app, which is downloadable from the relevant Android iOS app store. So I encourage everybody to download that because that will have a map on it. Uh, That will have a schedule of events, programs, and of course, what everybody loves, that will be giving the clues out to where the golden target is. Um, a lot more information on that, and you can download that any time. Uh, so that will be a great help to, for everybody to help find where they should be because uh, I've got a feeling people say, well, that's not where number one was. No, number one isn't there anymore. That's now 12, you know. Right. So there's a lot of things that have been added to that NSCA um, app. That's awesome. So, so as far as sort of changes, we've changed it as much as we can, but it's difficult uh, because the obviously the main event stations are 10 station courses, 75 birds. If I move one of those, it means I've got to find somewhere now to put 13 stations because it's going to take up room somewhere else. So 
we've moved what we can, and uh, it will have certainly a different look on it. Um, there'll be three machines on pump side by side and 20 to give them more variation on the target presentations. Uh, 4, 10, 28. In some of the stands, there will be the extra hoop. We tried that at um, Texas State, and everybody liked that move. So some of the stations, not all, but some of the stations will have a separate hoop to shoot 410 as opposed to 28 or 28 as opposed to 410. So that's some of the major changes that we've made for this year. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. And I just want to make, uh, just while we're on about nationals as well, um, Saturday night, uh, in remembrance of Lois, there'll be a celebration of life. Um, everybody should attend. There'll be other events on uh, remem remembering Lois. And uh, on the same note, uh, remembering Lois, and I want I want the opportunity to say a big thank you for helping uh, us out at Pennsylvania State, and that's Amy Crow. Um, you know, Lois was supposed to be with us at the PA State that weekend, and obviously she was not. Um, Amy gave up her uh, vacation days and uh, came up and uh, ran registration and, in my opinion, saved the shoot. So a real big thank you for Amy for stepping up and uh, taking her personal time. And, you know, there's also some other people that, have stepped up and will be stepping up to uh, change their schedule, give up their free time. So there's a few more people I'd like to say thank you to. We'll start off with uh, Becky. Becky Rogers did the Ohio State. Yep. Julie Clark, Clayfest. Nikki Bowers did the Clayfest. Heather Turner, Indiana State. Amber from uh, the complex. Well, Amber just does everything. So thank you, Amber. And my friend Kendra, Kendra Bittner, she did the Delaware River Classic, and I don't know if it's already gone, Flint Oak Cup. And then I know this one hasn't been done, but Daniel Abbott will be with us at Nationals this year. So thank you, ladies. I know it's a tough time, and I know you've given up a lot of your spare time and your free time, uh, but thanks for stepping up. It's really appreciated. Yeah, there's uh, Lewis kind of left some tough shoes to fill you know i mean she uh she was an amazing lady and uh it, it sounds like sounds like we have quite a few that are stepping up to to try and fill you know fill her spot and and do what she used to do yeah right? i think it the says uh, volumes about the <clears throat> excuse me the character of the people behind the scenes that yeah. are willing to step up and make a small sacrifice for the good of the of the shoot so yeah. that's that's awesome to it hear it surely does yeah, and, and you know, Lois had shoots booked into 24. So, you know, a lot of these ladies are going to be uh, stepping up more than once to, to help us out. Well, that's good to hear. Well, well, Neil, listen, we're we're gonna we're gonna turn the car around here. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna end this on a fun one. I uh, got a question here for you. No right or wrong answer, and don't worry, we're not gonna let the NSCA hear this. Uh, <laughs> if you had free reign. No restrictions, no one to answer to, unlimited budget. What would you diff do different for the national championship? Oh, boy, I stumped him. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute, do I want to answer this? I think I heard a short circuit noise. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> Come on, Neil, surely would, you've thought of what something. What would I do different? Well, uh. You've always dreamed and, of doing and, something or something, and and uh, and it came up in the uh, in the survey results, and I have to agree with it. the 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 national complex is looking somewhat tired. Mm. Uh, now I know that they've made improvements. There's there's a new uh, blacktop on some of the roads. Uh, they're getting um, uh, new gun racks. Uh, Larry Spikes is making new gun racks. Um, but they, they, I've come up with some ideas that uh, um, that could be um, that could be done. Uh, but I'm guessing it's all sort of um, it's all to do with budgets. And I'm and on and I'm not politically involved uh, and I'm not budget involved but uh, 
Um, I've told them about um, putting another road in so that we've got two roads where yellow and red is rather than a single lane road backwards and forwards. Uh Uh, And I've done the measurements. I would put a road in just to the south of that existing road with the turnaround at the end. Um, That type of thing, new new shooting stands. You know, and I get it. We use those white PVC pipe stands. They're easy to move. They do the job. But, you know, it, it's, our, it's our national ground. I think, we should, I think we should look at something different, something that's more befitting the national complex, if you know what I mean. Yeah, mm-hmm. something a little bit more prestigious, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as far as, you know, as if I... We've covered all the ground um, with uh, with machines. Uh, we've used all the ground, and it's that's why it's difficult to move stuff around. Um, so, as far as that the the shoot goes, I, it's um, you know, I mean, it, it, we have a, we have good fun on North versus South on Saturday. Top Gun uh, Top Gun shootout on uh, uh, Saturday. Uh, north south on friday um you know if we get a bit more radical what i what i've thought about is actually ending the nationals on the saturday and we could do that if we uh, because you know we don't shoot the nationals on the wednesday um if we shot wednesday we could finish nationals on saturday um and just so more and just so everybody understands that hasn't been there you have two choices for the national championship. You can either shoot a two-day rotation, which is on the Saturday, Saturday and Sunday to start the nationals, or you can shoot the traditional rotation, which is four days, and that's traditionally been Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And what Neil was talking about is starting on Wednesday and ending on Saturday. And if I had to guess, Neil, you're probably going to tell me doing shoot-offs on Sunday. Correct. Yes. I yep. think that's an excellent idea. Yeah. Or... What I would also like to do, and I, I've thought about it, is actually put on another 100 targets for the super squads. That would be amazing. Oh, kind of like a final, um, final, uh, final. And what I, would do, what I would do is that it wouldn't be the super squad. Well, and of course, we get to the, well, I shot it on the first Saturday, Sunday. You know, okay, we'll get over that problem. But also the top, and I'm making the numbers up a little bit, Jason Sean, is the top eight so we've got an A and a B squad, the top eight from each class. Oh, that'd be fun. That would be cool. That would be kind of I mean, like, just... like a super final. Yeah, super final over 100 birds. I would pick, I would use the main event road to put uh, 100 birds on, which would be easy. Change the targets, obviously. Um, got plenty of room to do it there. And uh, run maybe, uh, I forget how many maybe run uh, two flights or three flights, actually, uh, which would still finish us early on the Sunday. Um, I thought that would be – it's just something to think about, you know. Yeah, no, that's a, that's an amazing idea. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm on board with that. Yeah, heck yeah. So put it up for vote. We'll vote on it, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming that you you would be doing sort of a commentary again on that uh, on the Super Squad. I don't know how it would be set up, but it'll be something similar, I would think, would it? Yeah, um, I haven't got all the details yet. I know I was asked to do field reporting on Sunday. Uh, in other words, be in the field with the shooters. I I don't know the final details on that yet. I'm still waiting on a phone call to iron all that out. But I know that they have asked for my involvement again this year, uh, which I'm happy to do. Um, so. Yeah, uh, I guess when I know more, I'll, I'll we'll let everybody know. Hey, uh, maybe we can get uh, set up and you know an appointment for sort of an after nationals uh, uh, podcast as well, so that we can go over you know what exactly how it went. Did we was it good? Was it not good? Uh, so forth like that. Yeah, that'd be amazing. That'd be awesome. Uh, maybe we can maybe we can rope Mr. Hampton himself into this and uh, maybe go over, you know, what went right, what went wrong. What are we looking to change yep. for next year? I think that'd be awesome. I think it'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Let's oh, do it. And um, by the way, um, I, I, as it stands at the moment, I think I'm going to set the targets on the green course. Oh, fantastic. 
excellent. So we'll know we'll know to come find you afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I, I need your license plate number. So. <laughs> Well, uh, Neil, Neil, it's been a pleasure as always, sir. Uh, look forward to seeing you. Look forward to all these new changes. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun, fun year at Nationals. Uh, looks like we're headed for another record turnout again. Well, we are, and I, well, I was going to mention, actually, that uh, currently we're at 2,200, and that's two months before, obviously, the shoot, and that is 300 ahead of where we were this time last year. Okay, opinion only, no right or wrong answers. What do you contribute that to? Well, I, a lot of it goes to you and that live coverage last year. Uh, and I believe a lot of it goes to uh, Johnny Carter and TGS Outdoors for that uh, for the bit that he did. Uh, he got that out fairly quick, and I watched that, and within two days... That was up to 27,000 views, that uh, uh, his coverage of the Nationals. And I know he covered all sorts of things at the Nationals. And, uh, and uh, by the way, he'll be back again as well um, to do a similar type of thing. So uh, Johnny will be there with, uh, awesome. uh, with the guys. Um, uh, so, so that should be good. I mean, anything that we can put out there on the YouTube front like you guys do, I think you guys do a fantastic job of – putting the word out there, uh, getting people to know perhaps some of the people that they don't know, you know, uh, shooters, instructors, uh, and some of the lighter hearted stuff. I heard your, uh, your podcast with, uh, Brad and his, uh, frolics <laughs> around Europe. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, the other, the, I don't always, know what he was, the always I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I heard him say he was in Istanbul. Well, hold on a minute. That's Turkey. That's not Hungary. I don't know what he was doing down there. He must have got lost, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hopped in the wrong cab, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's Brad. Any, anywhere, the, anywhere the good time takes him, though, but God love him. He's he's a lot of fun. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so to answer your question, I think it was the uh, certainly the media coverage the social media coverage that we we did and and i think a lot of people are going you know i'm going to go like i said to you earlier on we'll get a lot of people come in because it's a one-time deal or maybe a two-time deal or three-time but they'll come to nationals see old friends have a time visit san antonio go to the alamo do everything like that with the family um and i think it's it's that that's sort of uh, boosted our entries up this year well you know, it was always a bucket list item for Sean and I. And then, uh, of course, Sean couldn't go last year. He His wife had some health issues that need to be taken care of. But, uh, right. you know, I'll, I'll never forget Chad Roberts telling me years ago, he's like, look, son, once you go the first time, you'll never miss it again. I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. I've heard this before. Once I, went, once, once I went the first time, it's like, well, I'm, I'm stuck doing this year, you know, doing this every year for the rest of my life. So... Um, right. That last week in October is dedicated to San Antonio. You say that yeah. like it's a bad yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. I'm not complaining. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. no, it's one of those things. Just you know, everybody's there, and it's like a yeah. reunion every year. So it's a lot of fun. It, it, it is, and it is. Sean and I push it all year long. It's a it's a must attend shoot. Um, if you've never been, and then I think once you know anybody that's listening that's never been there, once you attend the first time, I think Chad hit the nail on the head. Once you go, you'll go every year. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, and if, uh, just a, a fun fact, you know, I first, I think it was, it was either 95 or 96, I set the, uh, I set the national championships down there, and the entry was just over 200. Wow. So, that was <laughs> in, believe that? that was in, what year did you say, 95 or 96? 95 or 96, and the main event was where we used to, around the, that wooded area where we uh, typically hold uh, K-Cup. Which, which won't be there this year. That was the main event course coming down the other side along to where that uh, water tank is and the pond. That was the second course, um, and that was it. Wow. So if you think about that for a minute, in roughly 26, 27 years, it's grown from 200 to two over, well, 2,200. 20, mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah. and we're not even there yet. So who knows in the last two months, what's going to fill in yeah, more than so, 10. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Wow. I mean, 
that's that's quite a growth. Big numbers. So, big numbers. It is. That's yep. awesome. It's, a, it, it's amazing. It really is. And that's, you know, like we said, that's how we've come along. That's how the sport is growing, and it's growing. I mean, we see the entries for regionals increase. Yeah. Yeah, US absolutely. US Open increase, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, Sean and I are biased, so hope, you know, we're <laughs> – if, if we could toot our horn on anything, because we both suck at shooting, so if we could toot our horn on anything, you know, we hope that we're driving growth. I mean, that's what we, that's that's right. why we did this, is to give back. Right. I mean, you know, we want to see the sport grow. We love the sport, and we love the people yeah. in the sport. So yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's awesome to see, and, and um, you know, if we did play some small part in that, then we're forever humbled. Yeah. It's, yeah. it, it's awesome to uh, yeah. be a part of this, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel the same way. You know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I've seen these young shooters, you know, I mean, like uh, Anthony, when I was first over, you know, Anthony, I don't know how old he was, and he won't mind me saying, but he was probably 14, 15 um, at M&M, and I used to shoot there a lot because I lived down that way or in Pennsylvania then, and, uh, uh, you know, and I've just watched him come along, and it's just been... It's been an amazing journey to watch a lot of these people come along and uh, and see what they've accomplished over the past 30 years. Yeah, yeah, it is amazing. Well, we've definitely kicked over a lot of rocks tonight. I mean, we've we've got some oh my nice, goodness. nice nuggets to pull out and give to our listeners. So, Neil, I could I could listen, I can keep this going. I got probably 20, 30 more questions stewing in my head, but <laughs> but, I, but I think when I had a load, I had some more stuff down here that I was going to go over with you guys as well, like upcoming rule changes. Oh, oh! Well, I, I don't. I don't think we can let you go on that note. You got. Yeah, you got to spill the beans you, you, here. Yeah, you can't. You can't leave us. You, you can't do, us and leave us hanging like that. You can't do that to us, Neil. Come on now. I miss it. I, 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 I'll tell. You, this is a funny one, um, and it all came about because we had uh, a letter in saying, "If a rabbit's thrown in the air, why can't I shoot it on the ground?" Oh boy. <laughs> I think we're getting into that uh, Fifty Shades of Grey here. Yeah. And so, so it's not a rule change, and they're absolutely correct because it wasn't covered in the rules. The rules don't. So anyway, expect within the next few months some word changes to say that, and it goes something along the lines of a target intentionally thrown in the air must be shot in the air. A target thrown intentionally on the ground must be shot before it stops moving. Nice. That, well, something, something, some, that, some verbiage along that line, so that if you've got something in the air and it hits a tree, then there's something to say that if it hits, a, if it hits something, then it's, you've lost, it's gone. I mean, you know. So, uh, and it, you'd be surprised the number of people that said, well, if it's a rabbit that's thrown like a rabu or whatever it might be, and it rolls along the ground, can't I shoot it along the ground? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no don't be a dummy you know <laughs> yeah well there's a difference between a rabbit and a rabu so right right <laughs> so so expect that one uh expect that one to come along oh very okay cool. very cool like i say you know and um and i got i got several others uh that sort of uh, that that i'd like to talk about maybe on the next one or, or okay uh, you know, um, a couple of things come up, you know, how to, I'm going to call it how to disagree with a referee. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I had, I had that, uh, I had that come up, uh, uh, recently. Um, so, but these are all new rule changes. There probably won't be. No, that's, that's not a rule change. It was just something I wanted to tell okay. everybody that's listening, especially the newer shooter. And this, and it happened with a, and he wasn't necessarily a new shooter, although the second person was because it was his son uh, that disagreed with the referee. Or the, and actually, between you and I, it was the referee that was wrong in this instance. But they handled it wasn't handled correctly, so I could not do anything about it after the fact. You've heard of job security, Neil? <laughs> yeah. You just made yeah. yourself what we're going to call interview security because you're coming back <laughs> on very, very soon. Yeah, so, definitely. Uh, but you know what? Let's um, l let's jot this down. Let's keep in contact. Um, yep. And maybe when we do like a Nationals wrap up pop podcast, um, yep. maybe we can do that uh, sometime a couple weeks into November. Uh, we'll sit down with you. Like I said, maybe we can rope Mr. Hampton into it and discuss. 
uh, not only the Nationals, but some of these proposed rule changes. I, I think that would be a great idea. What do you think, Sean? Sure. I, I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. 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 We can go over a number of other things. And I can, uh, I get, you know, I'll send you some questions or something that I'd like to talk about, particularly to help the new shooters along that don't necessarily understand or not necessarily don't understand, but misinterpret the rule. Um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, and we know that the referees do a great job and they're very difficult to get and a lot of them are not experienced and they don't necessarily know the rules themselves. So there's ways around that, you know, that if you disagree with a referee or he makes a wrong call, don't get upset, you know. So we can cover all that, uh, you know, you're, in, in November time. You're, you're tugging on our heartstrings, and it's funny you say that because Sean and I just got an email this morning, a uh, gentleman asking about uh, world fee task and not understanding some of the rules. So right. I think, <laughs> you know, and that's coming next year here to the States. So I think right. we have time, and I yep. think let's put our heads together and collaborate, and we just tease the absolute hell out of everybody. Uh, we're going right. to have you back on. Um, right. shortly after nationals and uh i love it neil yeah, I, I i'm gonna start awesome. calling him neil tease me chadwick neil tease me neil the tease <laughs> neil, neil the, the tease, tease chadwick. yes <laughs> i love it i love it neil it's been an absolute pleasure having you on sir heck yeah uh, that's a lot of fun i enjoyed i enjoyed it let's uh, and i'll see you guys down there in october yes sir absolutely Sounds we'll be good, there neil. okay thank you sir okay great thanks, thanks neil thanks, guys uh-huh. yeah bye-bye you know, Sean, I could have talked to the guy for another hour. Yeah, that's my really first time really talking to Neil, and I tell you what, he's a very interesting guy. He's a wealth of information, that's for sure. Heck yeah. Well, he's been around the sport a long time. I'm sure he's seen a lot of things, talked to a lot of people, and uh, definitely has a lot of good information on about everything. So just a little dead pair of selfish plug here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to be doing some live uh, interviews with some sponsors uh, be that Elite Shotguns or Fuki Ammunition, or Fuki USA specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bear Pelt, we're going to stop by and see the Bear Pelt family. We're going to put the girls on camera. There you go. Uh, Atlas Traps, we're going to get down there and see Scott. Um, John Johnston uh, runs the Atlas store there at the National Shooting Complex. Uh, RE Ranger, hopefully we find either Sarah or Max walking around. We're going to talk to them. Yeah, one of them should be there. Don't know if the Odo Pro girls are going to be there. We're going to call and harass them. We're going to yeah, them we got to we got to put we got to put the squeeze we're, on Grace. We're, we're gonna now that sounded a little perverted there, Sean. I'm just going to let that one go. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> moving on from that, we're uh, going to pressure Doctor. Yeah, Grace. there you go, there you go. We're going to stop by the Rhino Rig. Heck uh, yes. Of course, Dawn. You know we'll be running around in her golf cart. We're yeah, gonna, absolutely. We're going to throw a log out in front of her golf cart, and make her stop and talk to us. Um, of course. Vera Beach Clay Shooting, Brian Palmer's going to be there at Elite, so we'll stop and talk to him. Obviously, White Flyer, Robert Crow, going to go in and see us some White Flyer. And we are hopefully going to show that new bio target they're coming out with. I'm super excited about this. Uh, Ricky Marshall Jr. has been testing that target, mm-hmm. and it is, I guess it's really cool. Like, when you hit, as a shooter, when you hit this target, it's totally, it's almost, it's not a flash target, okay? But it, it when you hit it, you know you hit it, gotcha. okay? Uh, and then Casey Chase, um, if she's down there, want to stop in, see Casey. Uh, we're sorry, Casey, we're going to put you on camera. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, we're, we're going to do some little live stuff here and there when we can find people and they're not bit super busy. And then, of course, we are going to be filming the uh, Top Gun shoot off on Friday night. It will not be alive because the reception from the Nationals is terrible. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to record it. We'll We'll edit out all the downtime in between stations that they do we'll put it all together hopefully i can get it released out within a day maybe even before the nationals is over i'll get it bumped out on youtube and of course we'll post that on uh, facebook and instagram got it well i'm really looking forward to it i didn't get to go last year obviously because of my wife's health problems and i'm just really stoked about being able to go this year yeah you know sean i wanted to ask you a question about that um i obviously you couldn't you couldn't go last year and i know you wanted to go yeah so, no right or wrong answer. What is it about the Nationals that gets you so excited to go? I just, for me, I think it's the people. 
Uh, you see pretty much everybody. If you've ever been to any of the, the big events across the country, you may see certain people because they're close to that area. And I think the Nationals draws everybody from all over the country there to that one spot to where you're pretty much, if you've seen them at one place, you're going to see them at the Nationals. So it's not the targets. It's no, not visiting sponsors. No, it's, it's not. It's just it's just running into people. It's like, a, like you said earlier, it's like a big reunion. Yeah. And it's nice just to kind of talk and chat with people, catch up with them, people that you don't get to see all the time. Um, you know, we get kind of stuck in our own little ruts and shoot our own yes. little local clubs and stuff. So it's always nice to travel uh, and see the people that are out there. So, okay, if you can give, I'm going to give you two answers. Mm -hmm. You can ask me this stuff if you want to also. Um, but uh, two answers on this question. New shooter going to National Shooting Complex for the first time for the National Championship. Mm -hmm. What two things would you stress the most? What's, what's two things that they need to do? Oh, man. I would say, number one, slow down and try to take it all in. It's kind of like going to Disneyland. You're not going to see it all the first day. Um, so there's so many booths, so many vendors, so many things to to look at. Uh, there's that. And then there's all the people that, if you've never been to the big events, you know, the guys you see on the magazine covers and on, on the Internet and on Facebook and stuff, uh, all the big names are, are usually there. And you can walk right up and talk to most of them. Uh, they might be on your squad, might be shooting a squad in front of you. Um, it, it's just really weird to see people of that caliber that you could just kind of say, hey, how, how's it going? And they'll talk to you. They'll yeah. talk to you. Uh, so, yeah, take your time. Take it all in. Um, don't get too uh, overwhelmed. Um, and I guess last but not least, try to relax. Uh, it's a big event, and I think a lot of people get it in their head. Uh, they put they put too much pressure on themselves because it is the Nationals. But in the end, hey, we're just breaking clay birds. So yeah. go down there, relax, and have a good time. Awesome. Now, what would you say, Jason? New shooter going? Uh, new shooter going, I would say, first and foremost, the biggest thing is security. And what I mean by that is, even though they try harder and harder every year and they, they ramp up their efforts every year, there is a problem with theft. Yeah, it's a known, um, it's a known element. Yeah, do not leave your gun in the car. Do not leave your gun anywhere but on your hip or in the... They have a gun building there, a gun barn. Um, man, listen... It's not expensive. It's no. dirt cheap. And they have armed security there 24-7. Yeah. Go there. Give them your gun. Make sure you give them a tip because those people do work hard. Trust me. You'll see. <laughs> you got an 8 a.m. rotation. You get there at 7 a.m. And there's a line out the door of people wanting their guns. And they work very hard to make sure you're not waiting for more than a minute. Yep. Um, so that's number one. There's been guns stolen out of trunks of cars. There's been entire vehicles stolen. Yes. Um, do not... Do not go to a restaurant. Leave your gun in the car. If you're if you're one of these people that doesn't want to leave your gun there, when you leave, go straight to the hotel room, lock it up in your hotel room, then go to dinner. Yes. Um, do not leave anything in your car. Especially if you're driving like a pickup truck, and especially if you have any kind of yeah. stickers or anything that advertises ammunition, guns, right. shooting of any kind. Because so, they're looking for that. So last year on my rental car, I left the center console wide open and I left the doors unlocked. There you go. I, I wanted to make it absolutely clear. There is nothing in this vehicle to steal except for the vehicle itself and go right ahead because I got insurance. I don't care. Exactly. So, I mean, but you have to have that mentality going in. So that's number one, I would say, security. Number two is don't overbook yourself. Yeah. And what I mean by that that's is... That's easy to do. <laughs> there is so many events there to shoot. Everything from all the sub gauges, super sporting, fee task, main event, prelim, you know, the K or the um, super, yeah, I said super sporting. There's a ton of events to shoot there, and you're going to want to see all the vendors. I don't care who you are, whether you've got money to buy something or not, you're going to want to go to the vendors. So take your time, take it all in. Like what Sean said, don't overexert yourself, at least your first year anyway. I would, right. I, if I, if you've, if I could offer advice as far as shooting goes, I would go shoot the prelim in the main. Yeah, it'll take you two or three days just to get your bearings. Yeah, and definitely, definitely shoot the four-day rotation if you can. I yep. mean, that's 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 traditional. If you can't do it, at least you can go shoot the, the two-day main the weekend before. That's fine. But as a recommendation for your first time, go shoot the main and the prelim only. Uh, that way you've got time to go visit the vendors and see all the people uh, the Saturday night dinner, um, meaning the last Saturday night, is really big. Um, the, we have the East versus West shootout. You also have the Top Gun shootout on Friday night. That's a lot of fun. Uh, definitely attend those events. Um, 
but it's man i'm telling you it's i don't know what to compare it to there's nothing else really like it i mean sean you and i have been involved in other sports and there's nothing like the week and a half of the national shooting or no, the national it's, championship it's the super bowl of our sport yeah for sure uh, but it doesn't just last one sunday it's nope. for a week and a it's half for a week and so, a half yeah but, um, well, hey, listen, we have ran really long tonight. Um, apologize for those that don't like long podcasts, but there was a lot of information to get out. Want to make sure you got everything you need. Um, and, you know, Sean Alley, again, what do we talk about every week? Get out there. Take somebody new shooting. Put a gun in their hand. Show them how much fun this sport is. Do your part to help us grow and make this sport better. Take them to the national championship. Take them to the national championship. That'd be a heck of a first time. Heck yeah. I mean, man, you know, that's something else, too. We never we never even discussed all the attractions in the area. One of the coolest things about San Antonio is the river walk. Yeah. Uh, you know, the wife can, the wife and kids can go shopping and go have fun. Or in the evening, if you don't want to stay at the National Shooting Complex, there's a bazillion places to eat dinner down there. Beautiful places. So go check it out. Until next week, Mr. Alley. Can't wait to see you all back here on the Dead Pair Podcast. We'll see you next time on the Dead Pair Podcast. The Dead Pair. The Dead Pair Podcast is brought to you by Elite Shotguns and Vero Beach Clay Shooting and is fueled by Fioki USA. The Dead Pair theme song was written, arranged, and produced by Toby Tomplay. Special thanks to the following sponsors. Bear Pelt, Rhino, Odo Pro, Don Grant, Atlas Trap Company, RE Ranger, and White Flyer Targets. 